Okay, this lesson is for section 3.3. We're going to be talking about some vocab with graphs, but we're also going to be, most importantly, discussing um, average rate of change. So this is a topic that you're going to see a lot in calculus next year, so I want to give you a good foundation for what that means. All right, so um, here's some vocab. Tank, stop. So here's some vocab terms. Um, the turning point of a graph is literally where it will turn and go from rising to falling or vice versa. So like P, Q, R, these are all turning points of your graph. Um, your maximum of a graph is your graph's highest point. So our max here would be at point R. Our minimum, of course, would be our lowest point, so like point S. Um, increasing is where you have an upward trend in your graph. So um, we've got a couple increasing trends here from in this uh, from the interval of 0 to 1, it's increasing, and from Q to R, it's also increasing. And then a decreasing um, part is where you have a downward trend in your graph, so from P to Q and from R to S. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is supposed to be representative of someone's fever over a course of 12 hours, so you know a fever is going to rise and fall, so that's what you're seeing here. And then we can find the average rate of change. This is going to relate to average rate of change later on. So um, real quick, I want to go through finding max and mins as well. I know this is something that you've done before, so I just want to quickly review this. Um, I've already plotted this function here, x to the fourth uh, minus 3x. So I've got it plotted, I graph it, and then I zoomed in a little bit too. So if we want to talk about decreasing and increasing trends in your function here, what we want to do is first find a minimum, right? This, this graph has a minimum value, so I'm going to hit second, and then calc, and go down to minimum. Obviously, if it was a max, you would go to maximum. Hit enter. When it asks you to go left bound, go left of that minimum point. Hit enter. When it asks you to go right bound, you will go to the right. Hit enter. And then guess, hit enter one more time. And your minimum appears here. So I'm going to put this away and I'm going to drag this over here. Okay. So we have a decreasing trend from negative infinity up to the minimum point, 0.9085. And we have an increasing trend from that same point, so point 0.9085 to positive infinity. This is where your graph is now increasing in values. All right, so that's a pretty brief review. Now the next portion, which is what our, fo our lesson is going to focus on, is the average rate of change. So here I've got um, the definition of average rate of change, but I want to give you more of um, you know, an application background for average rate of change. So we're going to do that by using distance. Okay, so let's suppose that you drive in your car and you record the distance you travel every few minutes. So you, um, you plot you know, these points and um, let's say if you never made any stops and you never had to slow down or speed up, then your graph um, might look like this, right? It might be a linear function. But most likely though, you'll be speeding up, you'll be slowing down, so your graph will probably look more like this. Now let's say I want to figure out my speed using my graph. Well, speed which is velocity, is given by distance over time. So if I wanted to find the um, average speed, let's say I wanted to find the average speed between those two particular points here, then the average velocity would be the change in distance over the change in time. So if I want to calculate that, um, you're actually seeing here change in distance over change in time. That's simply the slope of that line, right? Change in distance over change in time is the same thing as the slope, your change in your y values over the change in your x values. So anytime you want to find an average rate of change, you're really just finding the slope of a line. So I'm going to bring it over to just a general function. So let's say we have the function f of x, and we find two points on that graph, and I want to find the average rate of change between those two points. So look at my notation. My, to my notation has changed a little bit here. I have a, b, f of a, and f of b. So I'm using function notation here. And uh, which would mean that those points here are a f of a and b f of b. So if I wanted to find the average change between those two points, I find the change in the y values over the change in the x values, and um, which is found by f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And therefore, this is where we get our average rate of change. So f of b minus f of a over b of b minus a represents the slope of your line that connects those two endpoints. So that's literally all you're doing is finding a slope. Okay, so average rate of change is just the slope of the line that connects those points. Okay, so let's actually find um, the average rate of change for the function y equals x cubed um, on different intervals here. So the first interval is from negative 3 to 0. So I first want to kind of get you to think about what um, this function is going to look like. So let's say that you are from negative 3 to 0 looking for the rate of change, your average rate of change here. Well, 
the slope between any two points on this side of your graph here is going to be uh, positive. So we should get a positive increase here, um, a positive rate, average rate of change. So what we're going to do is find f of negative 3 and f of 0. So f of negative 3 is negative 27 f of 0 is 0. Now I have my two ordered pairs here and I can find the slope between these two ordered pairs. So to find the slope I'm changing, taking my change in my y values so negative 27 minus 0 over the change in my x values negative 3 over 0 and I simplify this and I get positive 9. So I have an average rate of change here of positive 9. Now on the interval from 0 to 1 since I already know f of 0 is 0 and that f of 1 is 1, when I take my rate of change here, 0 minus 1 over 0 minus 1, I get positive 1 here. This is a um, smaller average rate of change because your graph, your slope here of the line would actually be not as steep as, as it was here. Because again, if you look at your function, right, increasing from 0 to 1 is a far less increase from uh, negative 3 to 0. This is much steeper here. Okay, I'll let you guys do um, C on your own. All right, now this is also an application for um, some velocity problems. So here I want to get that little picture of that guy in there because I think he's cute. So let's suppose that you fell off the Sears Tower and your position is given by the function s of t is equal to negative 16 t squared. So after t amount of seconds, this is where you would end up. Um, what is your average speed between 3 and 6 seconds? So I want to know how fast I'm falling, my average speed between 3 and 6 seconds. So I'm going to find s of 3 and s of t, or sorry, 6. So s of 3 is going to equal negative 16 times 9. s of 6 is going to equal negative 16 times 6 squared, so 36. So I should say that it's also probably important to write these as ordered pairs. So um, here we would get negative 144, here we would get uh, negative... 576. So if you're confused about how to figure out the slope now, I would just rewrite these as ordered pairs. So 3, negative 144, and 6, negative 576, and then you're going to find the slope between these points. So calculating the slope here, I would have, let's see, uh, negative 576 plus 144 gives me um, 432, so negative 432 over 3 and I have an average speed here between 3 and 6 seconds of negative 140 so I'm falling so I shouldn't say negative 144 but I'm falling at a rate of 144 feet per second okay so on the back side of our notes um, we are going to do a couple more problems here that are increasing the difficulty a little bit because we're going to be dealing with a lot more variables. But um, we're going to be finding the difference quotient and the average velocity. So we already talked about average velocity on the problem beforehand, um, but the difference quotient is basically the same thing. So average velocity, difference quotient, and average rate of change are basically three ways of saying the exact same thing. Okay, so I want to go over and explain to you why the difference quotient looks slightly different than um, the average rate of change that we looked at before. Okay, so here we have a function f of x, and notice the notation has changed a little bit, just slightly. So instead of points a, you know, a, b, we have x, f of x, and x um, plus h, comma, f of x plus h. Sorry, this is actually a mistake here. This should be x plus h, comma, f of x plus h. I don't know why it's writing so weird. Sorry, the point's all jacked up. Okay, so anyway, still the difference quotient is the slope of the line between those two points. So my horizontal change here, sorry, my horizontal change here and my vertical change can be expressed like this. Okay, so this is correct here. It's just this point here is wrong. That should say um, x plus h plus, there we go, comma. <laughs> I can't write. I don't know why it's doing that. f of x plus h. Okay, so. You get the idea. But anyways, um, so our horizontal and our vertical change are expressed this way. So if we find the slope between those points, we end up with this formula here. Now, you're going to notice in the denominator here that those x's end up actually canceling each other out. So our difference quotient does look a little bit different because, they, you know, their x values cancel out. But this is the same idea as average rate of change. Okay? Same exact idea. You're still finding the slope between two points.
Okay, so let's focus on finding the average, uh, sorry, the difference quotient here. And now when you're looking at this, this time you don't evaluate for a specific value, you know, in an interval between one and three, like we did before with the average velocity. Here we just have, um, we're gonna evaluate using this function here and plugging it in to our difference quotient. So if I'm finding f of x plus h, that means I'm uh, using my input as x plus h here. So for each x value, I just plug in x plus h. So my numerator is gonna look like this. Three times x plus h squared minus five times x plus h. So this is taken care of right now, just f of x plus h. Then I'm gonna subtract from that f of x, which I need to put in parentheses because you guys sometimes forget to do that and then you don't distribute a negative there. But I'm just subtracting now that function over h. So now I'm just working on simplifying this. So in the numerator here, I have three times x squared plus two xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h minus 3x squared plus 5x all over h. So now I'm going to try to start um, simplifying a little bit more and canceling some stuff out. So this is 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared, right? Well this 3x squared is going to cancel with that 3x squared. This negative 5x is going to cancel with this 5x and I'm left with 6 a, 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5h all over h. Now, if I were to factor out an h in each of those, uh, or in the numerator here, then cancel it out, right, with the denominator of those, h's are going to cancel. So really, I'm left with just 6x plus 3h minus 5. So this would be the difference quotient, okay, for the function f of x equals 3x squared minus 5x. Now let's do um, the average velocity over this interval here. Okay, so the average velocity here is going to be found by plugging in uh, and finding the slope between these two points on our function. So I'm going to find uh, d of 1 plus h, and I'm going to find d of 1. So negative 9.8 times 1 plus h squared and negative uh, 9.8 times 1 squared. So obviously this is a little bit easier in the denominator, or in the bottom problem, d of 1 is just negative 9.8. Um, uh, d of 1 plus h is going to be negative 9.8 multiplied by 1 squared plus 2h plus h squared. So I'm finding the difference quotient, or uh, the average velocity here, so I'm finding still slope. So I have two points. My first point, let's list the easier one. The ordered pair is one, negative 9.8. This is my x value, my input, this is my output. Now my input for this is actually one plus h. My output is this, so I'm gonna simplify that on the right side. So my other coordinate is one plus h comma negative 9.8 plus uh, or sorry, minus uh, 18.6, 19.6, blah, 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 good God, 19.6h, and then negative 9.h squared. Okay, so uh, I could rearrange the terms also to, to put that in standard form, but I'm being lazy. Okay, so now let's find the average velocity, which again is just slope. So I'm going to take my y value here, and find the difference between my y values, so negative 9.8h squared, I'm rewriting it, minus 19.6h, minus 9.8, subtract away from that, negative 9.8. Okay, that's the change in your y values, so again, this y value minus this y value here. And I'm going to divide that now by the change in my x values, which is going to be 1 plus h minus 1. So 1 plus h minus 1, the 1's are going to cancel in the denominator. And in my numerator, uh, let's see, these are going to cancel here as well. So I have negative 9.8h squared minus 19.6h. Again, if I factor out the h in the numerator, and I now can cancel the h's here, I'm left with the difference, or sorry, average velocity of negative 9.8h minus 19.6 on the interval of 
1 to 1 plus h. Okay, so for 6 and 7, um, if you want to pause and try to do these two problems on your own, you certainly are welcome to. You don't have to listen to this anymore if you check with the key and you get it right. But I actually want to go back here because I forgot to do units on this. So um, this is our average velocity, but this should be in feet per second. I forgot to do that. My bad. Okay. So I'm going to do um, difference quotient for this particular function here for x squared minus 5x plus 1. So again, I input this x plus h in for each x value here. So I have x plus h squared minus 5 times x plus h plus 1. And then now I'm going to do the second um, f of x here, so minus the entire uh, quadratic here, x squared minus 5x plus 1. All right, now it's all over h. So I'm going to work on simplifying this. So I have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h plus 1 and minus x squared plus 5x minus 1. So let's go ahead and start canceling. The x squareds here are going to cancel out. The uh, 5x and positive 5x here are going to cancel out. And the 1s are going to cancel out. And I'm left now with 2xh plus h squared minus 5h over h. So now I'm going to simply simplify. Again, factor out the h. So 2x plus h minus 5 over h. These h's will cancel. And I'm left with... 2x plus h minus 5. And there's my difference quotient for the function x squared minus 5x plus 1. Yay. Okay, problem number 7, a little bit different notation. So um, I'm going to input now into my function. Let's get bigger. Why isn't it getting bigger? Oh well. Anyway, so I'm going to take f of x, which is 1 over 3x. And then I'm going to subtract from that f of a. So I'm, in other words, I'm going to input a in for this x value. So I have minus 1 over 3a all over x, which is just x minus a, right? Because I'm not plugging in into the function. So it's just x minus a. Now, um, in this, you know, I, to simplify, I like to get common denominators here. You could do a few different ways. Um, Let's get a common denominator here. You could also multiply by x minus a and get that into the, multiply by the reciprocal here. Um, but either way, I want to simplify the, the numerator. So I have 3a over 3, 9xa, 9ax I should say, minus 3x. Okay, so common denominator here of 9ax. So then, ooh, I'm going to divide that by x minus a, because this whole thing is divided by x minus a, but I'm going to rewrite it like that so that you can see I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So in the numerator here, I have 3 times a minus, whoops, a minus x all over 9ax multiplied by 1 over x minus a. Okay, so hopefully you are noticing that these are in fact, opposites of one another. So what I'm going to do is factor out a negative so that I have negative 3 times x minus a over 9ax times 1 over x minus a. And now these are going to cancel like that. The 3 here and the 9 are going to cancel, and I'm left with negative 1 over 3ax. All right. Thanks for uh, listening. Good job.